What will you do when the war is over? Tender comrade When we lie down our weary guns When we return home to our wives and families And look into the eyes of our sons Cigarette trying to find the right words all night, but still, nothing seems right or appropriate to the situation. I understand. Not the easy situation to make small talk about. I never... What I meant was... Why don't you try and eat something? I mean, this looks much better than bullion biscuits. What's the point? You look like you need it. I suppose I must look like death. Just for a moment, I thought the Grim Reaper had arrived early. <laughs> Damn all of this! You know, I believe that's the first time you've sworn in my presence. I'm sure you've heard worse from your men in the line. Yes, that's true. But I discourage it when amongst the lower ranks. Shows a lack of education and respect for themselves. With all the carnage and mayhem flying about them, I think a man's allowed to let fly with a few expletives once in a while. I'm glad you found this whole situation so amusing. Oh, I was just thinking, how strange is fate that it should bring the two of us back together after all we've been through? It's quite something, isn't it? It seems a lifetime since we left the village behind us. I find it harder and harder to remember the village. Normal day-to-day -day life. My mind seems filled with so many other things now. Come now. Surely you remember stealing from Mrs. Hicks's corner shop. <sighs> How can I forget? A daring raid, planned to perfection, thwarted only by the arrival of the local vicar. My backside ached for days after that. I remember your mother nearly died of shame when I took you back home. <laughs> she couldn't look me in the eye at the next Sunday service, nor to impress, what was her name? Catherine Bennett. Glad my mother isn't here to witness how low we've come. She would have found it difficult to comprehend. She always loved you, no matter what trouble you got yourself into. I know she did. But this, I'm not so sure she would now. She would be as proud of you as I am. I miss her letters. When she died, you were the only connection I had left to my life before all this. You should see this. It's beautiful. You never realise just how stunning a simple thing like a sunrise or a sunset can be. Never even give them a second thought until times like these. And yet everyone may be your last. We never take enough time taking in life's small wonders. Too busy living life and then one day, it's too late. You ever notice how some of your men whom you took to be rough houses after a push or a skirmish, suddenly they'll start talking about the color of the flowers, the smell of the fresh grass. But they wouldn't talk like that back home in the factory or the pub. Well, a close brush with death is apt to change any man. It's a pity there isn't a better view from the window. The local country is so picturesque. Away from the front, of course. Some poor sod's getting it in the net this morning. It sounds like our guns. 
Something to be thankful for, I suppose. It was such a beautiful country. Until we turned it into a quagmire. Just a shame it's so full of bloody foreigners. Do you believe that's the first time you've sworn in my presence? I'm allowed. Besides, it's accurate. What with us, the Germans, the French, Australians and everybody else, there must be more foreigners here now than Belgians. How did we end up in this god-awful mess? We signed up, simple as that. That's not what I meant. You asked how we got into this mess. The first was taking the King's shilling. One thing leads to another and here we stand, like it or not. All your years of sermon and scripture, and that's the best you can do. Sermons and scriptures are for another time than here. Our futures are decided not by chance, but by the choices we make. Well, if you hadn't volunteered, I wouldn't have followed you for the, what was it? The great honor of serving one's king and country. Or the great honor of dying from a gut wound in some mud bath. Watching your last breath bubble out through your chest. Or the great honor of seeing your friends and comrades die and be thankful the bullet took them and not you. Oh, and if you do survive, it's your duty to do it all again the next day. I neither asked nor forced you to follow me into the army. What I don't understand is why you took a commission as a captain when they offered you a chaplain's rank. You could have sat back with the rear echelon. No lice, no muck. Fearing nights, why? It didn't seem right to stand there and watch. I had to be there for my men, for their body and souls. There's no point saving a man's soul after it's been blown to pieces. I thought if I was there, fighting with them by their side, I, I could maybe help them. It's very noble, I'm sure. Yet still, here we sit. Did you really join up because of me? Partly, I suppose. I remember your announcement in church. Everyone spoke with such pride of your decision. I suppose I was swept up in all the further and the talk of glory. I wanted to play my part before it was all too late. Wouldn't want to miss out now, would I? For king and country. I was more concerned with God than the other two. I felt if I could extend the hand of God, then it was my duty to do so. Yes, they say we fight for God, king and country. King and country, yes, but God never. This isn't a crusade. It's a fight for money, power, dominance. It's a fight against tyranny and oppression. A just conflict against the infidels. I believe that at first after the Battle of Morval. Morval? After the front line had pushed forward, I was sent out with a first aid party to look for wounded. I came across the body of a German soldier. Nothing more than a boy. In his hands he held a Bible and a small silver cross. Imagine that poor frightened child praying to God his death slowly took him. And then I realised. The Hun believe the same as us. That God is on their side. God is with us all. 